love how they play it. They play it for me every time. They play it so well. They play it magical. Magical. La da 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 da. Oh, oh, oh. Wrong button. Okay. It's only on a new city. Sonic 06. Grant, that's me. Sonic Weekly, the every seven days or so podcast about Sonic the Hedgehog and associated interests. We've got the original heroes back together. The original team, Sonic Weekly. Me, Grant, Bo is back with us. Hi, Bo. Hey, here we go, buddy. Happy belated birthday to Yuji Naka. It is close to that 1965-917 anniversary. Oh. Your ring chime. Yeah, you're right. Put that in correctly. This is the uh, the birthday episode for Yuji Naka. Uh, you know, I love then... that he had disappeared to go to jail and then came mm-hmm. back, posted one tweet. Uh, messy stuff about uh, how the people who put him in jail were liars and right. went away for months and then came back and said something like totally normal and then went sailing mm-hmm. again. Yes. Well, the totally normal thing was about Sonic the Hedgehog movie three. Yeah. Normal relative there, I guess. Like, it's still like a weird... It'd be a weird tweet for maybe most people. And the star of our show <laughs> is David the Lurker. Hey, David. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi, Grant. Hi, Bo. Oh, man, that's right. We we didn't theme this around Naka, although maybe last week should have been that. I Maybe not. I don't know. Um, we can always talk about Naka. Right. Oh, it's because right? it's his last year in his 50s, right? So he would turn to 65, 6 plus 4 plus 2. He turns 60 next year. So we got to give him a big send off uh yeah but before we celebrate all things naka i just want to bring up you know if anyone looked at the title they know who the guest is but we haven't said it so for people who don't read we're still holding off but last time we did a little intro where for some reason we were talking about where our names came from it's because movies was like oh i used to be sonic movies and and then ashlyn told a strange story about her mom stalking someone and then i just said i was me grant you never said your name you left it as a big teaser you were like it's too dark for the show but i'll save it for later yeah yeah and and, and you're setting me up for it now right before we introduce aaron yeah no no <laughs> no no uh, no you gotta you gotta find a, a much more a much more delicate this is point. thematically joined because yeah because it's it's the same it's the same guest. He deserves well, to hear the truth. He does. But <laughs> once I say it, it's going to be a huge bummer. You're going to regret asking. We're all going to be sad. Oh. And then I'll say, and here he is, <laughs> the director of him, BoJack Horseman and Tuca and Birdie and uh, his own series. Uh, it's Aaron Long is back with the show. Hey, Aaron. Hey, good to be here. And I am also still curious about uh, the origin of your name. <laughs> We could just do like a really long bleep and then be sad. Yeah. (laughs) months. Has it been a year or something? I don't know when the last time I was here. Okay. Well, what do you know about my name? What do you know? know It starts with the letter G. Well, well, let's, let's, let's start with what we know. Okay. Starts Uh, with uh, G. Yes. G. Grant is my name. That's true. (laughs) What, what kind of fact are we supposed to know? It it rhymes with, uh, Brant. Yeah. Um, uh, no, uh, was there like a genie involved? Oh, uh, you, you, like you grant took that right out wishes? of my uh, right out of my head. Oh, oh like wait, it grants so, you a wish. Yeah, yeah. is it sad you, because the genie's imprisoned or something? No. So were you wish one, two, or three? I don't know. Grant was the name of my dad's dad, who killed himself. Oh, oh. that's that's where that goes. <laughs> uh, so I never got to meet him, but. I liked the name just as like a sound. So you didn't because it's my it. middle name. Because it's my middle name. Oh, okay. I sort of did yeah. pick it. I yeah. sort of did switch to it like our best friend of the podcast, James Paul McCartney, also a middle name guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I was inspired by that. And others where I was like, because my first name, which will remain a mystery, uh, was my dad's name, although I wasn't a junior, you see, because I had the different middle name of the suicidal grandfather mm-hmm. like gerald we can tie this into sonic <laughs> similar to gerald robotnik who uh doomed who well i guess he was shot to death by the government he was yes. kind of asking for it though like maybe there was yeah. a little bit of intention well, yeah that, we might well, have seen well, that we before, the morning before that intro um <laughs> you can believe the part where he killed himself if you want <laughs> just say his name yeah. after well, your grandfather yeah but, i don't know who's going to be offended he's 
he's dead and I'm the person related. So yeah. Right. Well, I was going to say, if you really don't want to tell it, we could uh, ask Bo, hey, where'd your name come from? Uh, it's all due to my father, who one day evidently just announced, like, our child will be named Bo. And that was the end of the discussion. And uh, <laughs> this was wow. picked, you know, long, long before. I was, it's even uh, sadder than even... Grant's story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, Aaron and David, now you have to refresh us because I don't, re- I don't remember. Uh... But... I don't why, know why we I... were talking about that. We were talking about it because Smoothies, who isn't here, <laughs> right? Who isn't about here? The origin of his screen name, his screen name, not his real name. I, I yeah. didn't because... know his real name until somebody like dropped it casually on one of our podcasts like a couple months ago. I just, oh. I just thought his Christian name was Smoothies. The Smoothies, right? <laughs> well, I think he, um, yeah. Uh, I, if he's editing this, he can cut this out. But I, I think he just doesn't <laughs> want people to necessarily know his name uh oh and like i really want to be airing my dirty laundry <laughs> i mean i could be wrong i think it's just like oh he smoothies here uh, elsewhere is his real name yeah, yeah which I, I won't even say he wants that could. separation from the internet right um <laughs> well like i got on the internet if i said this before on the show but like just as an 11 year old kid started using my full name which is like unique as far as i know there's nobody else with my name and so Mm -hmm. i have this very long history with my own name on the internet and then you know i became an adult and then started posting under pseudonyms but then i got back into sonic and everybody knows me under my name again so i'm 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 back like that's that's, yeah that's true i mean I, i i have a friend who he had a screen name but when he would post on say usenet it would have his father's real name <laughs> in the header every time. That's so awesome. it, it wasn't that hard to figure out who he was. That's so funny. Actually, just, there like are... The of, you know, if you were, like, shit-talking everybody all the time online, <laughs> and everybody was, like, mad at your dad about it. Yeah. So I, at, at some there point... There are cheat codes attributed to my father because I was <laughs> sending them into segasages.com under what, his really? address. Yeah. What? Chips oh. Challenge. Whoa. Look, Baby Bo. The, Right. Yeah, that was before you uh, went into orbit. You were still. That was before I went into orbit. Yeah, <laughs> but this should be known. So for your future uh, Wikipedia page, your current right. Wikipedia page, they can update the early <laughs> early personal life portion. Early yeah, career. that's right. Uh, yeah. Aaron, welcome back to the show. Now we know everything <laughs> about each other. Uh, we were just talking right before we started recording that uh, after this recording, uh, we're doing we're coming back. We've been doing this podcast for over a year, and one of the ways that you can tell that is we are repeating behaviors that we did last year. <laughs> last year, you may recall that Bo came to visit me in Los Angeles so we could go to Hollywood and see the Sonic Symphony, and that's going to happen again after we finish recording. You're going to hop on a plane and come over here and see, and we're going to play. We're going to play, among other things, we're going to play Sonic Unleashed because I still haven't finished it. And I've been playing it again on the Xbox Series X. And we will be talking about Sonic Unleashed more. But uh, also just want to talk about the, the symphony. And Aaron, did you get a chance to see it? You said you saw it in the show I in did. Toronto. I saw it in Toronto right after moving back here. Yeah, I loved it. It was really fun. Um I mean, I always kind of lean towards like liking the uh, the '90s stuff more, with some yeah. exceptions. But so I was always like, "Oh, why didn't they play more of that old stuff?" You know. But like, uh, they played enough of it that it was like reasonable. You know, I know they can't just favor the stuff that's like 20 years old, 25 years old now, or whatever. <laughs> right, because the concert is like split in two. Right, like the first half is like the '90s stuff that's like orchestrated. Mm-hmm. Then there's an intermission. Spoiler. And the second half is like more like a, a rock concert. There's guitars, yeah. drums, bass, band, singing, vocals. Uh, and so at that part, you were like, I don't like this. Oh, I mean, I love the adventure era stuff, you know, uh, like I won't spoil like what they specifically play, although it's probably not that hard to guess some of the yeah. tracks, you know, <laughs> but uh, like that stuff was really fun. I just I don't really know the newer stuff from like Frontiers or. Yeah, you know, uh, right. Whatever yeah. else. When the last few years. Yeah, because they play they a lot of that first too, one. Yeah on the live stream i guess it was 2021 yeah like that was the first time i was hearing a lot of those songs that i missed in my offline era yeah and uh, now you know i have them tattooed on my soul <laughs> but yeah like and i think like almost all of them are the best renditions of them yeah they, it's a like, tight maybe that's a hot take, band 
You know, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, they're really first good. half is a symphony, but the second half <laughs> being a band, you're like, it's a good band. It's not like just, some, yeah. they got like some shitty karaoke versions or something. <laughs> Even though yeah. for Endless Possibility, which is from Sonic Unleashed, it's not the original singer from the game. Bowling for Soup. Yeah. No, uh, yeah I think uh, Nathan wants to battle a guy. Yeah. Blows Jarrett Reddick out of the water, which. Whoa. You know, is that a hot take? Another, another hot take. Uh, yeah. I like him just because it's the available one and, <laughs> and it sounds good. Like the other one's not on Spotify. Uh, so I like it for that reason. I didn't get any of the original singers in Toronto. I think uh, the Crush Forty played in L.A., right? Yeah, we yeah. we had kind of a stack lineup. We had Otani on bass. We had Sonoe on oh guitar. God. We had Kellen Quinn singing the Frontier stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and Naka came out and started scatting. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they played For a lot of blues trap. The and then he goes, oh, "I need wow. all those back." By the way. I yeah. love this. <laughs> yeah, it was really embarrassing because they didn't, they like stopped the show so he could go around and like, had, like <laughs> collect a little, his, his dollar collect bills his, back. Like, yeah. It was like church, but he was going around and like <laughs> falling over people's knees and stuff. Like, no, he didn't think until later to pass it. And then he was like, damn it. It sort of seemed to blame somebody else. Uh, and we were all like, that's this classic Naka. <laughs> Classic Naka. He's just been doing this for years. That's <laughs> one of his trademark uh, moves. Yeah. Is, I right. mean, the, the thing with the Sonic Symphony for me, that probably for a lot of people, is that, like the series has so much insanely good music over like the decades that inevitably there's stuff that I'm like, why didn't they? There's this whole like category that they didn't even touch, you know? Or they didn't play a single song from like one of my favorite games, but it's just, you know, it's like impossible to cover all the bases at this point unless the show is like five hours long. True. I would stay for the five hour version. Yeah. I mean, I would too. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. I'm like, why isn't it five hours? It's Abraham right title, Lincoln once said, this... You can't please every Sonic fan, so don't even try. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah wise words. What was Abe's favorite Sonic game? Um, Unleashed, but the Wii version. <laughs> oh, that's <how> great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. He... Isn't that strange? Uh, that but yeah, strange. What, a, what a quirky guy. He uh, was. Has there ever he, been a log cabin themed level? I guess there was the wood zone. The wood zone, and, yeah. Uh, Sonic 2, yeah. Right. But it yeah. was it was cut, maybe because it was too close. His favorite yeah. Sonic game is Sonic 2 Beta. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Abe and Simon Wire. Yeah. So Lincoln's like, I don't go for the mainstream shit. Only the beta version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or maybe um, Sega was was too worried, you know, it'd be controversial. Like, oh, he just died. Can't put this level in there. It'll make people too sad. Yeah. I think that's what happened. They didn't put in Lincoln Log Zone because Link it was... <laughs> that's a pretty good name, actually. <laughs> you just go through the history of Lincoln's life, and then Act 2 is he's a ghost. Oh. I mean, I like that title more than just Wood Zone. At least so that would be Sandopolis. Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Abe Lincoln's haunting the level. Yes, this right. log zone was cut out of uh, Sonic 3D Blast. Yeah, <laughs> it, that it, it would it would aesthetically fit that game. Right. Yeah, uh, Dream Grove, Diamond Dust, Rusty Ruin, Lincoln yeah, Log. Lincoln Log. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> let's let's check the news Whoa, and then do, do, do. let's talk about other stuff. Yes, play the news theme, David, please. <laughs> Brought to you as always by stonicstadium.org slash news. They don't know we're doing this, but we appreciate their work anyway. Uh, okay, David. They have for decades. Right. Yes. They are a wonderful resource and we rely on them. That's why we shout them out. Right. They're, they turn they turn 25 next year, just like oh Naka goodness. turns 60. Oh so my God. Oh. yeah, let's how is a website that old? I just don't believe it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope they don't, uh, you know, murder anybody or something like that. You know, we're relying on them a lot. Yeah. So if they end up murdering somebody, it's going to be like, oh, boy, you guys referenced a murderer a lot in your podcast. <laughs> this website <laughs> just got canceled. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully it's uh, OK. We haven't checked that out. But we do know that the news is accurate, including Sega sponsors a animated short from the YouTube animator terminal montage, something about Shadow comedic short that summarized the sh the events from Sonic Adventure 2 through Shadow 05, Sonic 06, even a bunch of spin-off games mm -hmm. uh up until present. David, let's start with you, then Bo, 
Aaron, what did you guys think if you watched it? Whoa. Oh, wait, we're supposed to watch. No, I did watch it. Ha ha. What a dumb joke. OK, yeah. I mean, it's I mean, I liked it. It was fun. I was amused by the fact that the entire thing was using what David Humphrey from from Adventure 2. You think, yes. oh, I guess because he's the most shadow of them all. Uh so even like when they did, oh, here's the refer- here's the 06 bit and uh, whatever else, they're still just using Humphrey. So, and uh, I enjoyed that. Uh, I mean, it, it's clearly all cut up and stuff, but I guess that is the nature of the animation. It's fun. It covered everything. It even mentioned uh, sh- the non-Shadow. What, what was his name? Lance? Is he Lancelot? In, uh, no. Uh, in right. Black Knight? Is he Lance? Yeah. I forget. He's yeah, one yeah. of them. He's one of those knights. Uh he smiles at the end and then gets abducted. Spoilers. Um, is that the first time we've seen Shadow smile? Maybe. Is that canonical? Maybe. It's uh, good. Right? Well, was there any uh, joke that stood out to you as being particularly good or bad? I like all the Sega references. The typing of the dead for the guns was a very nice touch. The crazy taxi reference, very good. Mm-hmm. Knight's reference, very good. But I think they just nailed the shadow takes himself very seriously but you can still have a lot of fun with that by having everything else be wacky yeah and so eggman saying yosh that's a great easter egg for sonic 2 sonic adventure 2 they got yosh in fans. there, got yosh yeah. in there a bunch of times it's so yeah. good okay. yeah yeah uh so yeah i i liked it quite a bit uh, i'm not familiar with this animation person or okay. team style seen, so i yeah. presume like the rest of their th- things have like a similar humor but i kind of like yeah. how they like set up a thing and then cut it off just before it pays off <laughs> he he's uh well uh whoever they are uh they've done uh previous sonic uh shorts before i think uh, they did something about sonic one and sonic two uh, so they've okay. they've definitely done sonic themed content this is the first time Sega pays for it. Pro. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's pro. cool. I like that they just, that they commissioned a short from these guys. And interestingly, like, it was posted still on the Terminal Montage YouTube. Yeah. So it it was Sega like posted Sega and links to it. it. Yeah. yeah. Right. But it wasn't even like a video that was um, native to YouTube or Instagram. It was like linking out to the creator's channel, which is right. very cool. So oh. if if Sega had... I put it on their channel. It might have become like their highest viewed video on the Sonic <laughs> YouTube account. Instead, uh, I guess Terminal Montage gets all that YouTube Rick ad in. revenue. Ooh, I oh, and I thought the like use of music was exquisite. Like the ending part where they're like flying through the later games with the mm-hmm. uh, truck chase from City Escape. <laughs> yeah. I gotta watch yeah. this. I mean, yes, I love the yeah, look of it. I'm just looking at it with the sound off right now. Oh but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Visually, I really like it. it Super like, funny. Uh, and yeah, I would say overall the the ad campaign, I guess, for Year of Shadow is going well. Uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations uh, has had like a lot of cool things like this so far, and I mean, it's all the hype is there. So you know, things are things are rolling. Uh, speaking of the Sonic movie. Uh, Early Transformers 1 ticket holders can earn an exclusive Sonic Movie 3 poster, and then it was revealed online what that poster looks like. It is the Akira slide shadow on the bike with three fingers destroying the asphalt, the the gra- the right, the, the just the road uh, as he as he skids. And he doesn't care it, about property damage. No, but that would hurt, right? That would burn. That would hurt a lot. I mean, he's wearing gloves. Yeah, well, and he's, he's super strong. Yeah, he's the I ultimate presume. life form. Yeah, he can, the, well, he's not that fast. He needs rockets. Right? He doesn't care about the workers right. who are going to have to fix that. He's, right. Spoilers. He, he he survives a drop from space at the end of Adventure <laughs> 2. I think he can handle a little heat on his fingers. <laughs> Has any Sonic character ever taken fall damage? Uh, it would be funny if like Maria actually died from fall damage. <laughs> <laughs> um that's that's a good question i don't i don't think so i can't think of any right because we've seen sonic bounce multiple times yeah fall damage just isn't a thing in sonic which Which, i've said it on the show multiple times 
why does Tails scramble to catch Sonic and Sonic 2? Yeah. <laughs> does he not know? Just let him fall from space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he was might... a dumb kid at that point. He didn't realize right. Sonic he was like, the... humoring him. He hadn't done the science yet. I mean, Sonic, like... there are almost every level of every 3D Sonic game, Sonic takes fall damage by dying if you go off the rails, <laughs> you know? That's <laughs> true. The way he does, but not, no. not story-wise. <laughs> and then, no. yeah, in this in the same game, like, you can die by running off the rails in Windy Valley, but then you'll later see Sonic fall all the way from the egg carrier. <laughs> exactly, and he, yeah. His, his face plants into the sand, and he's fine. Ah, you're not who I'm looking for. He runs off. <laughs> gentle bounce. Gentle. He's, yeah. uh... He falls twice in that game. Um, what did you think of the poster image and the Akira slide? And the, I mean, it's very uh, sincere, you know? It's like, it's very much like Shadow's cool. Mm-hmm. We think Shadow's cool, and we think you think Shadow's cool. And yeah, I do think no Shadow's cool. Here. Exactly. They're not playing he up like, cool. oh, it's goofy. How cool, how seriously he takes himself or anything. It's like they're presenting it almost like uh, I think this is a good way to do it, but it almost feels like they're presenting him to like the movie audience. Like this is just a new character you don't know before. You know, there's no kind of winking. Uh, oh, you know, he's going to say his famous line or something. Yeah, he's, he's going to say something. Maybe one I hope day. He says, oh, I mean, I'm sure he's going to. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I think he will in the movie, but it seems like the way they're they're kind of like presenting him right now isn't like <laughs> yeah. oh, it's shadow. It's just like, whoa, who's this cool guy? Yeah. They're not having him say, I'm the coolest. We don't know if he's going to say that. <laughs> he did say it in the Terminal Montage video. He's got video, which I appreciated. But like, if that's the first thing that like, you know, somebody who's never heard of Shadow before, if that's the first thing they hear him say, they don't think he's the coolest. Yeah. You can't say you're the coolest. You gotta, you gotta show save that until the they already believe yeah. it. He, could, he yeah. could be lying. He could be lying about how cool he is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't realize it's signed. What? Yes, uh, also signed. Uh, the f- first, I think, 100 or however many hundred uh, are signed by voice actor Keanu Reeves. Whoa. Uh, I hear he's doing live action as well. But <laughs> in this, he's live action. But anyway, I want to pose the question of just how do you think we're, how, you know, we're in September, we're at Yuji Naka's birthday. Uh, mm-hmm. The year of Shadow has been going. How do you think it's going? So far, we're about a month away from the game and then a couple months away from the freaking movie. Are you hyped? Well, are you are you dudes hyped for Shadow? Is he the coolest? <laughs> if, uh, I'll go. Yeah, it to me like <laughs> kind of an off here for the games. I guess there was Dream Team at the beginning of the year and uh, X Shadow Generations is a reissue but it's got all this new stuff in it so you know it's not a frontiers year or a superstars year in terms of the game but i i do anticipate really enjoying the movie and uh i am most hyped for the symphony in a couple of days Ooh. so 2024 quite good oh yeah as a sonic fan right year of shadow um I completely lost track of what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. I was going to be like, hey, Aaron. Right. Well, you, right. The last time Aaron was here, it was when Sonic X Shadow Generations was properly announced. Exactly, so I guess yeah. you are uh, artificial Shadow the Hedgehog correspondent. That's, that's <laughs> what you've become. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I haven't been more excited about Shadow since 2001, I would say. <laughs> yeah. I would agree. I, I don't think I have felt this strongly about Shadow the Hedgehog since 2001. Right. You are excited to renew your vows with Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> you were days away from a divorce. And then he comes back. Yeah, I wasn't even that excited in the 2001 marriage. That was like a Vegas wedding. And then now it's like we're renewing our vows, but it's like we mean it this time. Yeah. Oh. Because we've actually been away for a lot of the time because where has shadow been you know even in the in the the montage video uh after shadow after shadow's story in sonic 06 Mm -hmm. plot wise he does essentially disappear for 20 years yeah yeah Yeah. 
I think they decided or maybe realized that they they might want to use him a little more sparingly than like for a while right after Sonic Adventure 2 he was like everywhere all the time right and I feel like maybe the uh the mystique was kind of wearing off with him yeah yeah they definitely flew too close to the sun with Shadow 05 and then exactly yeah just doubled down in 06 like who's, <laughs> what's more shadow than shadow Mephilus? Uh yeah that's uh <laughs> It was too close to the sun. That's why he didn't have the wings. They burned off. It's uh... Uh, now they're like, "Hey, let's get even closer." Let's keep it... right. And now those wings are going to stay firmly attached. Uh... <laughs> right. So better glue on the wings. Yeah. But there's almost like a big debate. I feel like I've seen with Shadow where people are like, "Should he have like outlived Sonic Adventure too?" You know, like because that's like that's it's like if. Uh, chaos was like in every game afterward and you're like oh there's the water monster guy who's just a part of the regular cast now <laughs> which i guess he has reappeared you know but right. like his story is like almost just like like that game is his story arc to me at least yeah what i don't do really think, think too much about shadow the hedgehog <laughs> if i, like if I were writing it i would have killed him off for real but like i don't, I don't know where do you start where do i get to take over on the writing because <laughs> I do kind of like in Heroes, it's like, oh, wait, I thought Shadow was gone, but there's all these copy shadows. Like, that's a cool concept. You know, yeah. Which I mean, I, one? is there a real one? I'm not necessarily on the side of they shouldn't have ever brought him back because I feel like it is fun for him to kind of, you know, fill that role as the like the darker version of Sonic in a way. Um. But I do also feel like he's stolen a lot of Knuckles' thunder because Knuckles almost <laughs> yeah. used to be the kind of like yeah. that 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 role a little bit in like the nineties at least. He's also stolen Knuckles' anniversary. He's Knuckles' thirty thirtieth anniversary was this year, and what are we celebrating? Oh, no. The year of Shadow. Oh. That's right. Yeah, Sonic Three and Sonic Knuckles 3. came yeah. out in nineteen ninety four. That's right. February and November. Right. I mean, you could make the argument that in in some respects, even Shadow has stolen part of like what makes sonic cool like if if sonic is meant to be oh he's the coolest character then just right. having shadow be like well actually i'm cooler cooler <laughs> cooler cooler and I'm more aloof i'm exactly like <laughs> so if sonic it feels like sonic has to be nicer in comparison to shadow even though like vintage sonic was sometimes an asshole yeah he was the whole thing was that he had an attitude right. he could be right yeah he, he had an ass uh, or fleetway comics just flat out asshole yeah <laughs> right right so so the fact that shadow exists it's, i guess also like how classic sonic is has to look cuter than modern sonic because he yeah. can't be cooler than even though like back in the day when tails was created part of it was oh tails can now be cute and we don't even have to think about sonic ever looking cute again he's just cool <laughs> and now and now everything's yeah. out the window clearly i guess they should have stopped making games in 92 is that what is that's not what my <laughs> thesis is but uh. <laughs> yeah it's interesting to think about how it like just having the all these different characters kind of forces everybody else's roles to like realign and like shift and or contract a little bit yeah like if shadow is the edgy cool one then sonic's not really not that he was ever super edgy, but you know, yeah, <laughs> right. He had, uh, you know, he was, yeah, you know, he was never super edgy, but he, he definitely was edgier had... than Mario was almost the whole selling point character wise, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, and uh, I guess Sonic, in some ways, ha is more Mario fied now, even though Sonic, I think, still has a more defined character than Mario, at least game wise, yeah, well, for sure, you know? yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, th like think of how much of a artistic risk like the adventure era like just character art is compared to now which is like kind of generic and bland oh yeah like mario i forget that i wish i this is terrible to say i forget the name of the artist because the whole point of Doing what college? i was about to say no uh <laughs> the other person who like helped design that whole adventure era stuff they were just oh, post, yeah yeah they were just posting all this stuff about that art on twitter recently like you know, mm -hmm. how they kind of helped push it in that direction. And they talked about, oh, you know, I was really influenced by like hip hop aesthetics and stuff. I wanted uh, I wanted to see Sonic doing cool poses on people's T-shirts in America. And that's what <laughs> we were thinking when we were like designing this new look. Uh, 
and then yeah he just kind of got so overshadowed by uh, okawa yeah, yeah. I, I do I, wonder I, I love the okana stuff i love the Iwakawa stuff but like this the current like box art or like mario and sonic at the olympic games like is indistinguishable from like paw patrol to me <laughs> yeah just... oh I, I agree yeah yeah i like the uh having actual illustrations like that. the fact that you know so many fans now will like bother to do like specific emulations of like that uh, uh dreamcast era design yeah. style with the shading and stuff you know it's it's cool to have such a distinctive aesthetic the new game will have skins alt skins for the sonic generations part sonic adventure skin and a sonic jam skin for classic sonic that's kind of the main appeal for the reselling portion of generations aside from it being on switch and and playstation uh yeah i to the shadow question uh i i think it's basically i think everything that happened ended up happening in the right way even if it was chaotic because (laughs) it's just sort of a it's very comic book and it's very tropey i guess that he would die and then come back like that is good and fine like that makes sense for shadow the characters all have one arc right and then they just sort of hang around like tails <laughs> tails yeah, has yeah. one story knuckles oh. has one story shadow has one story That's and true. then it, they do it is interesting when you compare them to each other like knuckles becomes stupider so tails can be smarter and then sonic <laughs> becomes just more he becomes average, nicer i guess or yeah. nicer yeah like he to make them different then everybody has to sort of adjust a little bit uh and it is interesting to watch that happen um and shadow is interesting as well to think about in relation to knuckles because knuckles i feel like is like adjacent to sonic he's like uh whereas shadow is like like he's he's explicitly being like cooler than sonic he's like a step above tails is a step below maybe and Knuckles is adjacent <laughs> so this is the shape of it and yeah you can't have him like hanging around maybe that whole time because he is he is so cool uh or he is like just like a different flavor of what a spiky hedgehog can be about i like the idea that of them kind of using him more sparingly you know so when he shows up you're like oh shit it's shadow and not just like well of course shadow's there along with the like 10 other characters or whatever you know Absolutely. And that's, I think what they're doing with Shadow is really great too, because they seem to be giving him uh, his own like rogues gallery too. Like uh, we've seen that there's a bio lizard boss fight. So bio lizards seemingly one of his, oh, okay. and then, you know, you've got black doom coming back and then I don't know, like maybe we'll see Mephiles and then infinite. Uh, so there's kind of like, so he, he sort of has like the more DC comics, style alien villains versus the Eggman <laughs> robots whimsical of Sonic. Or maybe Sonic becomes more of that in relation right, yeah. to Shadow. Are they, uh, I don't know if you're at liberty to discuss this or if you know, but are they bringing back Shadow's famous gun for Sonic X Shadow Generations? I think they've backed off on that. It's, yeah, that's and, fair. It's a good th- decision in, in, probably. In but. this video, um that they put out the gun soldiers all come out with like computer keyboards and the the sound of gunfire is actually them like typing sounds like clicky typing Whoa, really? which is funny by itself but then it's also a reference to sega's typing of the dead so <laughs> I, I think that's like a wink of like okay i like that yeah we're, we're losing the guns this time and i think that's actually cool. azuka has said no guns this time he's got shadow powers he doesn't need them Right. Is he, he going to curse? Where's that darn fourth <laughs> Chaos Emerald? <laughs> right. Where's that gosh dang Chaos Emerald? He's never going to say damn again. Um, right. Maybe in and the movie. Th- Maybe they'll have, that could be a line that Keanu would say. Right. In, <laughs> also in the cartoon, they, he does hold the Chow gun briefly, which is a very cartoony gun, which I guess is similar to like in Sonic 2, the movie too. Uh, Tails has a gun, but it's not really a gun, you know? Although, the gun agents have guns, but Sonic never holds that gun. Best visual gag in movie two is the gun (laughs) in the Bible. (laughs) Yes. One of the best visual gags maybe in all of cinema. Can we make that declaration? Can we? I think you just did. Uh, I guess I did. (laughs) 
David, there was one more news item, and oh. that was the uh, oh right the, the actually yeah. Can you what is it? I don't really know how to describe it. Okay, have you ever uh, watched television? Let's say you sure. know you have uh, younger siblings. You're watching someone's kids. You have kids and are watching kid television. Mm-hmm. I know somebody in this call has watched children's television with kids who are theirs, <laughs> and you see a commercial. It says, "Hey." It's a pillow. It's a pet. It's a pillow pet. Great. I I feel like there's lots of department stores that just have them in a pile in some wire and you go, yep, there it is. They're making a Sonic one and it's terrifying. That's what it is. It looks terrifying. It does, It's like Sonic has little nubs like it, it's white for hands, but he's got no fingers. It's, it's like he's a like a like a like a little a piggy bank and he's so, it. It oh, looks, yeah, this is horrifying. It, it doesn't look, it looks, I don't know, it frightens me. It's like his arms and hands have been, yeah, just smushed into like, uh, like if they were made of Play-Doh and you just like smash them down into little nubs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody <laughs> gave my older son when he was a baby a toy like this. It wasn't Sonic, but it's a, some sort of like red panda fox thing. And uh, I, I guess I'm no longer squicked out by the weird shape of it. but. The legacy of this is at the time, I thought it would be really funny to name this Fox toy, Jamie Fox. And then when my son learned to talk, he would be like, where's Jamie Fox? It was like, well, <laughs> probably LA, I guess. And still to this day, uh-huh. uh, we still have Jamie Fox on the, the toy shelf. Right. And one day he's going to say that in your life. He'll be asking to watch the movie Ray. Ray Char- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I need to see that Academy Award winning performance, Papa. I don't know why your why your kid's gonna call you Papa, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be a surprise. Django and Chain, that's gonna be a real, uh, <laughs> real uh, collateral. Yeah, collateral is a great one. Yeah, yeah, you're planting the seeds for a lot of a lot of great cinema. Don't here. sleep on the musical career either, though. Oh, yeah? uh, that's true. I've yeah. never. I heard mean, you're anything. opening with Ray, so you gotta like pay that off. It's like Chekhov's gun, Ray's uh, piano. That's a yeah, talented artist, talented producer overall. A very talented guy who's honored in this weird looking stuff toy. <laughs> I guess we have to ask ourselves has Jamie Foxx played Sonic the Hedgehog? And Whoa. which or what, if so? I think for sure he's played some Sonic something. Yeah. No, no doubt what. he had a Genesis. Like it, if you're it, if you're yeah. reaching his level of fame in the nineties and you didn't have like a Genesis, what what's what it all for? Doing? Yeah, I bet he was sent a Dreamcast by Sega. Whether or not he opened it is is another question. But I bet he was really into the advanced games. I bet he loved Sonic, uh, <laughs> Sonic Pinball Party. <laughs> it's probably his number one title. All right, it travels a lot, you know. So maybe he's playing a lot of uh, game yeah. advanced games like Battle yeah, Pinball yeah. Party, the advanced ones. Um, he's going all over the place to spend months on set in different. Uh, different places he's going to need some some portable gaming yeah you know who else is evidently at least delighted with sonic is uh osama bin laden <laughs> right <laughs> now the the, news the, story the, the, yeah. straight the, from the twitter the, sphere uh. i i saw it on a discord chat of like hey you guys ever heard of this and <laughs> <laughs> evidently the cia released the contents of all the hard drives that were, that were found in the Abbottabad compound. And then they immediately said, oh, snap, we got to take off like copies of Windows because that's, you know, against the copyright distribution of Microsoft. And so after they cleaned that up, what was left was, you know, a bunch of pictures, a bunch of documents. And among the pictures one was Sega Sonic the Arcade game. Right. <laughs> the a, a prototype version nonetheless yeah. Yeah. he's even more than simon y holy shit oh so he man was in deep if he was playing the prototype of the arcade game yeah you think he had a trackball and everything <laughs> i mean we don't know that it like... was osama bin laden himself it could have been You're somebody right, else been living in the compound because yeah. this is not for sonic this has come up before with the computers there because there, there's Final Fantasy, um, even like fan art 
there's like Grand Theft Auto stuff. So it's almost not too surprising that there would be Sonic something. However, the fact that it's this specific Sonic thing is very surprising. And also just the fact that there's a CIA.gov slash library like link <laughs> that ends up in a Sonic <laughs> image. That's right. Is strange. Like some analyst had to like examine that picture, make a report about like, okay, we don't think this has any ties to you know, terrorist activity. <laughs> or they call up Sega and they're like, we, we, we've heard some rumors about the Yakuza and How Sega. Is this from? <laughs> <laughs> it's not an official release. It's like, oh no, the, the Yakuza has, has nothing to do with any terrorist activities that have occurred. Uh, in in the Middle East or against the United States of America, but we can do a war criminals episode. <laughs> we can definitely do a war criminals episode yeah. where it's How? like who has played Sonic that has caused the deaths and suffering of countless right. innocent people. I think Gaddafi for sure. Oh, right. Okay. Now, I mean, who was big in the early '90s? That's right, Saddam Hussein. Do you think? <laughs> yes. Oh, he probably had his own OCs. It was like Saddam the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> if not him, it, like at least his kids. You think like Uday and Kuse were like running um, around playing like Knuckles and Sonic? Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Why there, not? There is that uh, one. What is? Is it a brother or a son? It's a relative of Osama bin Laden that everyone like brings up. Is like, oh, he he just hangs out and is cool. With whoever, like, I can't he's think a good of hang. What? Yeah, he's a good hang. And I'm like, uh, Omar is his oh. name. Omar, is it just, uh, yeah. just Omar, like just Kramer, <laughs> just like just like Omar Kramer. bin Laden? Is is it Omar bin Laden? Uh, Saudi artist. Yeah, right, he's uh, right. He's uh, he's the fourth eldest son of of Osama bin Laden, and uh, look, he lives in France. Uh, he was born in 81. Now he, he might have, uh, some experience. With <laughs> it might've been his wrong. <laughs> it might've been. He's like, dad, you know, like, you know, trying to, to form those familial bond bonds being like, maybe, maybe, you know, we can all get along. I've got this game. It'll, it'll the crazy really... thing about it being the prototype of the arcade game is that like, it... He must be in so deep, you know? Like, that's not, like, the, <laughs> nobody's first Sonic game is the prototype of the arcade. Like, nobody's, like, 10th Sonic game is that. He's got to have been, like, yeah, I, I've I played think, Sonic Labyrinth, I think... played Sonic Pinball Party, I need a new high, and then he goes to the, I played the arcade game. I got to find the prototype. Go deeper. Exactly. Yeah. No, I think the, the the theory, and there's evidence that it's just, like, from a ROM set with a ton of stuff. and yeah i, I mean that makes it. the most Doesn't sense matter. but yeah uh, i think he was probably you know if you scour like the forums he was probably on there under some alias. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> do you think he posted on area 51 <laughs> <laughs> he was in the sonic stuff research group yeah, exactly. oh wow right who mysteriously oh no it wasn't simon why <laughs> <laughs> i haven't heard from him in a while in a while yeah uh oh oh jeez uh, simon while you know, have we brought up on the show fact that the first person to break the news of the Bin Laden raid was Dwayne The Rock Johnson? You know, I don't think that we have, at least not recently. <laughs> that's a stone cold fact that's never been explained, but right. he uh, posted about it online. Fact? <laughs> <laughs> Would Dwayne The Rock Johnson take offense to this? Oh, the fact that it's a stone cold Steve Austin fact <laughs> about... Uh, Wait, how was it him? How did he do it first? That's the question. How did he know? Like, yeah, I think the theory is he had a fan in SEAL Team Six who like tipped him off after the deal was done. Wow, like just a message to him on Instagram. Like, I gotta tell the Rock about this. <laughs> yeah. right. What did the Rock? What was his most recent film at that point? Um, <laughs> like the Tooth the Fairy, fairy maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, well, wait, when did Osama... I, I, I don't even know 2011. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That, so up, probably... that could be that could be it. I remember where I was in 2011, and I remember the billboards. Right. That, Generations that was coming out. Um, yeah. 
Let's, let's check out his filmography. So we know where Omar bin Laden was. He was probably lining up to grab a copy. <laughs> uh-huh. Right. Um, well, in 2010, he starred in uh, Tooth Fairy, uh, a very comedic <laughs> role in The Other Guys. Uh, oh, yeah. A film called Faster, but then in 2011, he started in Fast. He was in Fast Five. And I, uh-huh. I think that that kind That's of elevated. Be there. Yeah. yeah. What was the point of this again? <laughs> Where was he when he found out or something? Right. Like, like, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Where, wait, no, wait. I'm sorry. Really explain the. How did we get here? We what got are we from doing? Osama bin Laden has played Sonic to, you know, who knew about the killing of Osama bin Laden first was Dwayne Rock Johnson, which has no Sonic connection. If he now. was going to be in Sonic 4, yeah. like in the fourth Sonic movie, who do you think oh. he'd play? Like Silver, maybe, or something? Oh. I kind of hope they don't do silver. I feel like that's dipping too far into the like uh, Sonics. They missed the opportunity. But he should have been Tails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there Maybe were rumors Aang. that he would be Knuckles. Uh, yeah. When, oh yeah. Before uh, they cast Idris Elba, but that didn't happen. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know who he could be now. I think the. Well, he could I be the president. The he could be the yeah. The president would make <laughs> a good cat's good. Yeah. <laughs> he could be. He could be uh, Mecha Sonic, maybe. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, there you go. Um. Wow, we've wasted a incredible <laughs> amount of time. Right, uh, we... Aaron. We <laughs> meant to talk about other stuff. This happened, I think, the other time too, because we were gonna we were gonna talk about Archie. Uh, oh, but yeah. in this case, we're gonna talk about Unleashed. Sure. Yeah. Because we saw each other in real life recently uh and yeah it was great you saw that i have both copies of unleashed the wii version and and you and and i was first of all you saw my preposterous amount of sonic stuff that is currently out on display on shelves it was amazing it was like a sonic museum yeah and then uh sonic unleashed came up i'm struggling with it but you've played both versions and uh And I don't think we got into this last time. So, uh, yeah, you were saying that Sonic Unleashed, I mean, you can tell us, but uh, uh, that was one of the, that's one of the big games for you in the franchise. Yeah, I feel like I sort of, like, I think I mentioned last time, I kind of dropped out of the, like, after Sonic Heroes, I sort of was just disappointed by what was going on, you know? Tales um, of this time. Exactly. Oh, myself. Many such cases. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I think I Unleashed, I think I saw bits of, footage of the the daytime levels and i was like wait this is a new song this this looks really good though what uh and then i don't think i actually played unleashed until sonic around when sonic generations was like announced and on the way and then i was like wow okay so there's like multiple new sonic games that look cool that i should play and so then i grab i think i still just had like a ps2 at that point so i played the ps2 version first and then got a ps3 so i could play that and generations and you know all the other wonderful games available for the system. But uh and that's like the best way to do it is to play the less powerful version first. Yeah. Oh, there's no way I would have played that one after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it really feels right. like who that. would do that? That would be <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> I mean I it just feels it's I guess it's a different it's like the different, levels yeah. are all different, right? I mean the same yeah places in the world and stuff that's like the level the same, design the courses are, yeah. Right? yeah uh which is cool that it's like two different games basically but i feel like in almost every way it's a worse game right <laughs> would you agree basically. having played them Unless, both? Yeah, like if you're a real big fan of like the platforming of the werehog which i'm not i don't oh, know if such either. a person exists like yeah. you'd be like oh man there's so much more of it here exactly yeah <laughs> um i do remember the werehog stuff more distinctly from that version uh there's so much of it such a slog exact exactly. version the ps2 wii version yeah, the, the, yeah the there's version. more the werehog in that one there's yeah. so much more oh exactly wow. oh okay i didn't know that i didn't get far enough to realize like, that. my memory of playing that version was like wow there's like not much daytime stuff is there but that's still no. like the, the better stuff in the game but uh yeah i mean i feel like it was the game even maybe more than like uh, the adventure games where I was like, oh, this is what I want it to feel like when I'm playing Sonic in 3D, which might be kind of sacrilegious. I know everybody loves the adventure games, but there's, I mean, I do too. I'm coming around to that idea. 
I just feel like the, like <laughs> if I go back and play them now, like any of these games, uh, the three D ones, like the adventure ones, I kind of I still remember all of the like sort of subliminal. Oh, I have to do this because you can't really do what the game wants you to do. <laughs> you know, like I I still have all the yeah. muscle memory of okay, like it's gonna shoot me over here, and I kind of have to like push the character that way instead to avoid glitching or whatever. But uh, Unleashed and just I don't know Generations Colors, I just feel like they're great uh, experiences. You know, when you're playing as Sonic in 3D, you're like, yeah, finally I can just run absurdly fast and uh you know it's it's so satisfying yeah i i've been coming around at this take which is that had they hit upon the two elements that are introduced in unleashed which is the boost style 3d gameplay and then the parts where you just kind of seamlessly flip into 2d platforming sections had they come up with that in 98 for sonic adventure the reviews would have been like they cracked it. They did a 3D transition better than Mario. They're geniuses at this. Versus like 20 years of us, oh, I got a rocky transition to 3D. Exactly. Yeah, it took them so long to get there. I find that I struggle with the Unleashed controls. It, that, that's the game where it, to me, feels the most like a shopping cart on ice <laughs> sort of thing. I, right? I do find that, though. Yeah, it's a little too slippery for me. I think I think by Frontiers they've really refined how it feels in the boost levels to the point that I like playing the the Frontiers versions of the levels that they remade. But yeah, the like the set pieces, the the visual, the like the level layout, the things that you're doing in the daytime stages of Unleashed are amazing. The production values fantastic. There's a lot to love about Unleashed. It's just that for me, because it's why I'm hoping you know, like so many people for a re-release because it just needs some sort of quality of life updates where just more checkpoints with the Werehog stages because it's so discouraging to accidentally walk into water that you thought wouldn't kill you and then it did kill you (laughs) and then you have to do two battle rooms again and you're like, God damn, like, oh, it's such a slog to like do it all again just to get the medal. And you know you need the medal to open up the next daytime stage. Yeah. So that That's loop bad. is pretty frustrating. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I, the I where... those daytime stages are just actually all genius levels that are just super hard and super inaccessible. And until you're really good at the game, you can't really enjoy them. But w- once you are good, they are really nicely put together. Yeah, I mean everything good I'm saying about it. I just mean the daytime stuff. I really, yeah, <laughs> I never really want to play the the werewolf, where werehog stuff again. I just, you know, like I, I was playing a little bit recently mm-hmm. uh, to kind of dip back into it. And I'm like, yeah, I, this is why I haven't touched these levels uh, since my original playthrough. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's such a compromised game. I mean, it's so weird to like the whole storyline of him turning into the the werehog is so kind of goofy. If I feel like it's an idea that should have been slapped down, like no, 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 just just have those just like knuckles levels or something. We don't need this, yeah, that, this ridiculous conceit, done. you know. Yeah. <laughs> like the gameplay could basically be the same, but but I would like it better if I was like, oh yeah, half the game I'm playing as knuckles or something. I yeah, I yeah, you read my mind on that. That's I would, if you, if you could climb and glide though, that would make those a lot better. Yeah, exa- I mean, yeah, it, not literally the exact same, but similar yeah. mechanics maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I, but I, also I'd rather just play more daytime levels. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of the, the thing with any 3D Sonic games where you're like, yeah, playing as the other characters is okay, but really I just want to do the Sonic stuff. Yeah, and they've they've never felt like the boost stages are enough. It's always with something yeah. else. Yeah. Even colors, which is mostly just the boost, is also has the wisp color power ups. Right, They're pretty unique to that game. Um, they appear in other games, but not in the full form that they do in colors. And uh, oh, I mean, it's, Sonic it's, Shadow Generations is one of the examples of where it is mostly just that. It is mostly just boost plus it, plus. I, I, I think it's classic. it's expensive to do those, right? Because yeah, right. you, you just like go fast through assets, and stuff. right? Exactly. I don't even mind if they reuse assets for, you know, if you're like blasting through like a hundred buildings, I don't need them to be a hundred 
distinct yeah, buildings. I'm like, yeah, you could use the same ten yeah. in like different distances and like you know, I'm fine with direction. That. Yeah. You know, every single one has to look different. I'm sorry, <laughs> and it doesn't feel real otherwise. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, right, generations is like half boost because then you, the classic stages, right, and and now I mean with the the shadow stuff because we know we get two D ones, boost ones, but then the 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 hub world which is uh, essentially what it looks like is a, a mini frontiers island not to mention the frontiers island that's a stage but that's not where the hub <laughs> world is it is uh yeah it is um it it is simply a, a cost cutting but at the same time remember back in the day like sonic the hedgehog oh here's a level there's two acts there's three acts you, you could just Make, yeah, make a, one dark. Right, like here's the daytime stage, and the nighttime stage can just be same place, different layout. I, I don't know why that's so hard. I guess right, it yeah. just is. Um, maybe they're worried it, it's too it's done too fast. Nobody would pay sixty dollars for a game they can beat in an hour, but maybe you would. Yeah, that's know. what I want. You know I what know. are interesting to me because they, it's like. So they they have those what are they like the act three of the or act two of the daytime stages in Unleashed where it's like insane challenges mm-hmm. like to me they're insane you know where it's like platforming and like every every jump is onto a platform that's like five inches wide or something yeah like those are so absurdly hard to me but I kind of like that they it's like a way of giving you more uh, daytime content you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Even though they're so hard, I don't really go back to them that much. Right. There, there were also a DLC <clears throat> ah, season. Oh, I they were, uh, right, I DLC that. ones, which you can no longer buy now because they shut down the uh, the 360 store. But is that um, what I'm thinking of? I mean, are those I think part of the main game? Do you know what? You there, know what there, there were ones from the main game, like Act Three, which are short little challenge hard. But then there were even harder ones that you could pay for if you. Oh, wanted. okay. Yeah, I don't think I ever even knew those ones existed. Right. Oh, those are even harder. Uh, I think one or two of them were adapted into Frontiers, like mm. specifically. I I don't remember which ones offhand, but uh, yeah, no those those are those are hard. Those are always hard. They will always be hard. But if they ever re-release Unleashed, you'd have to include them all. I guess the <laughs> ideal re-release of Unleashed would have all the content from HD and SD. Minus the Werehog. Exactly. My- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could have a Werehog free version, maybe like, you know, in colors. I love that. That's in colors, what I've there's... played. Bo hooked me up with the Generations mod uh, yeah. that yeah. has the just the daytime stages from Unleashed and that was cool. So that's how I like feel like I've, I haven't really checked the box, but I've like sort of I've I've been inside the box. I've, check, <laughs> I've checked out the box, but I haven't yet. Like I haven't played Eggman Land to completion oh. for real, so I can't properly check that yeah. box. Right, and well, I need to do I, that. I yeah, I wish they had that for the SD ones. Like the SD ones are the daytime stages are worse in every dimension, but they're still kind of cool and better than the warehog yeah i mean it's it, i just i would happily have all of that stuff in like a re-release um like the ps mode in frontiers stage. yeah you know how do you feel about uh the what do they call them the hub worlds in uh, unleashed compared to like the adventure ones because it started as like correct me if i'm wrong didn't it start as like uh they were trying to do a new sonic adventure yeah, it's it's called Sonic World Adventure in Japan, and it's right, like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. they know of it, um, know it as. But yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah those hub worlds, uh, the the unleashed hub worlds just don't seem as fun to me. I think they're too small. the The adventure ones, uh, at the time, they kind of felt like, oh, this is almost like their own level, even though they are small ish. Oh six tried to. Uh, expand on that but but the 06 hub worlds are just too empty there's nothing going on yeah like the adventure ones i feel like are a place from my childhood that i could Mm -hmm. wake up there (laughs) yeah it's it's funny i feel that way too yeah (laughs) you can you can go to swinkle park you can avoid drowning to death you know all the fun stuff from i could do yeah i could do just fine if i woke up in station square i I would know to go where to go to the hotel to spend Uh the night 
I would uh, know where I could find a weird like dummy man that I could yeah, uh, yeah. bring or into a store man. or whatever. Yeah, Absolutely. he's got to be pretty light. Uh... <laughs> but the O six Hope World, mm-hmm. I, the mission would be like get to like two blocks away and turn right, and I would be lost immediately. Yeah. Oh, those yeah. ones just seem insane. Yeah. 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 They have potential, I always argue. <laughs> uh because they're uh cool conceptually castle town and a new castle town and a forest and uh yeah, oh, I love the aesthetic, I hate the map. Yeah. Oh sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the map yeah, no, right. there, there it feels like there aren't enough like unique uh landmarks. Like especially in 06 right. when you get to I know where hey, middle aged man is. I can if you I can, <laughs> if I could find yeah. my way to middle aged man who says he yeah. invented Luppy Luppy. Luppy Luppy. <laughs> then I know to the right <laughs> around the corner is the train, and then to the left is back to Soliana Old is Town. That, okay. Well, then he is. I and guess the boats. He, he's the biggest uh, landmark. But you know, I was. But you know, like when you start and it's like, hey, you got to ring the three bells in that town i'm just like <laughs> where, where there's three bells yeah. in this town uh, aren't they all the same i don't know I, that's just not what i want from like a sonic game really no i, I yeah. mean the the unleashed ones are neat and i guess there's technically there's two parts there's the part where you talk to people and you have some fun there and then there's the part where you actually go to the level but that's also a hub world uh maybe it would feel more complete if it was all one instead of it being separated into yeah, I agree. Like that. Um, and, just, and the menu-driven ones in the SD one are just like, why? Yeah. Why did you bother? Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's not a hub I, world. That's a that's a operating system. That's what that is. <laughs> the uh, the stuff with the people. I guess maybe this is just why I don't play a lot of like RPGs. But I just I find it so tedious in Unleashed. Just going up to just the sense that you sometimes need to talk to people and they're all just like kind of saying variations of the same thing. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, I you feel have... like that in my real life. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> they just, I mean, it's such like, uh, I don't know, low like effort when it's NPC optional. character stuff, you know? I like when it's optional and it's flavor dialogue, which is Sonic Adventure. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I guess, it, I guess it can help you find where the keys are when you don't know where the keys are to open up Windy Valley and Ice Cap, but uh, otherwise they're. It's gotta have flavor there. though, yeah. And I feel like the ones in I, Unleashed don't have that much flavor, you know. Yeah, I love like, translated like Japanese RPG dialogue though from NPCs. It's like, boy, did you hear about thing <laughs> over at the? Goodness at the gracious, tavern? Professor Pickle's been kidnapped, and they talk to the next yeah. person. And it's like, I think I heard Professor Pickle got kidnapped. It's like everybody has like <laughs> very slight variations on the same thing, yeah. That's... Um, I want to hear know? So, you know somebody should be like man fuck that guy I never liked him anyway <laughs> Glad he got you know I want more I kind of <laughs> wish somebody had God, taken the was... liberty of a more uh, a drastic rewrite for the English version I, was like, I heard God, there was, was an item over close. under that tree but I don't think uh, that's real <laughs> <laughs> right how do they know it's not real it's five feet away just look yourself <laughs> check it out uh Okay, we are about out of time, but we have a little bit of a moment to look at the mailbag, which is on subject for what we're talking about. Anyway, this one comes from Scotty Moe, who says, Hello, fellow Sonic freaks, lovingly said. My question is inspired by the event of Ugly Sonic indirectly helping promote the first live-action Sonic movie. I genuinely believe the shock of Ugly Sonic brought more attention to the first movie than Sega or anyone behind it could have hoped for. Besides Sonic 06, can you think of a time when a marketing fiasco or another disaster has helped the Sonic brand or another property? Thanks, Scotty Mo. These are like fails that you parlay into some much greater success. Yeah. Well, one small example of that is the... Uh, tracks that are used in Sonic 3D Blast on Genesis that are reused in Sonic Adventure for Twinkle Park uh, because I just learned that Sonic 3D Blast on the Genesis Mega Drive didn't come out in Japan. So from Sonoe's perspective, he was like, oh, these are unreleased tracks, not being not re-released tracks. So the failure 
of Sega of Japan to release the British Sonic 3D Blast <laughs> to the starved Japanese audience of Mega Drive owners who were surely wanting that game. Uh, never received it, or they had to import it. I, th- I think the movie example that Scotty gives, though, is right on. Like, they couldn't have come up with better marketing mm-hmm. you know, had they tried. And we know it was a total accident. But, like, we've heard Tyson talk about, like, the emergency <laughs> where they brought him in to repaint Sonic. And he, they capitalized yeah. on it, and it worked out. It worked out because it became, like, a thing to, like rally against and then be like well they did it <laughs> when the new Everyone Tyson game was like wow okay yeah. we have yeah all right this is exactly good. like that thing that everybody was like gonna hate us doing or it turns out we're not doing it yeah yeah like, it, it's really um it's unusual you know usually they just <laughs> it's too late to fix it it's such a yeah like legendary fiasco at this point <laughs> yeah i think both are pretty unique is the thing is there are it is tough to think of another example where a major disaster in a entertainment thing or like i mean you could say it's like batman and robin right is like a big disaster and that eventually leads to the nolan trilogy so that's yeah i kept thinking of like other iterations or other franchises where you know there's like a certain version that becomes so reviled that then they can use that as marketing for the next version of it like hey we're doing it different from the last one yeah it's unusual i feel like for it to be with it like hey remember four months ago and this looked like shit now it's <laughs> a little better yeah <laughs> the same thing the same thing yeah i mean yeah. i feel like star wars has done that like they kind of leaned on like well you really hated those prequels right well we're going the opposite <laughs> direction no more george lucas you know that was almost uh, like a selling point for the, the disney sequels is that, I mean, he's not involved now don't worry yeah it, it was because they're also like look at all these practical effects look look at look at these real things right. i can touch ignoring yeah. of course that there's cg in practically every second of that movie uh <laughs> but it's it's not it's not jar jar binks cg it's um space yeah. and then yeah i think like in the sonic franchise maybe just kind of a long grind of those heroes through uh, pick your when did the, <laughs> the drought end yeah you know, frontiers. Six, i guess oh, okay. right yeah i feel like they've somehow been able to like pull out at least some music or at least some cool imagery from those and you know in all the retrospectives it looks cool like in the sonic symphony when they play the black knight montage you're mm-hmm. like damn that looks awesome right yeah and it's because you don't have to play it. But, you know, they're, they're taking the, they're capitalizing on what's what's good about it, which is the, the music and how it looks, and turning it into a success. I think out of necessity, the Sonic series has gotten very good at that. Like, hey, remember this thing? Just this one part of this thing. That was cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I was listening <laughs> listening to the 06 soundtrack while I was working today, actually, and Soliana New City came up, and I was like waiting for us to break in <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've permanently ruined uh, a couple of tracks for the audience including our concluding track which means uh aaron thanks for joining us the links to aaron's work and patreon are in the description thanks for hanging out with us uh and here it comes david to close out the show oh yeah there it is there's that song. It's from Unleashed, which we talked about. That's right. This song. Can you imagine if, like, when the sun sets in New York City, this song was just pumped through every single nook and cranny of all five boroughs? You just can't escape it until the dawn. Well, if there's... That sounds horrible. <laughs> That's a well, totalitarian fascist nightmare. <laughs> well, if you want to avoid that t- totalitarian totalitarian to tato total tea you know what what i'm saying is you finished another episode of sonic weekly and you loved it and that's definitely not because it was pumped into your room all night while you were sleeping and you were just dreaming about the amazing podcasting that we can do <laughs> week in and week out hey and if you haven't already you should of course do the things that I always say you should do, which is subscribe. 
using your podcatcher of choice, be it Apple Podcasts, be it Spotify, be it if you only have an Android device and that's what was playing all night under your pillow, hey, Podcast Addict. It has the Sonic Weekly stamp of approval. Ka-ching. <laughs> Why ka Hey, yeah, and uh, you can, of course, you know, rate us, review us, do it in app. That helps uh, the magical algorithm of, of podcasts. And But if you don't even want to deal with the podcatcher, we're also over on YouTube. It's at Sonic-Weekly. You can subscribe there. You can like and you can comment. And there's also visuals, gameplay footage recorded by friend of the show, Jack of Old Games. That's right. Those games are old mo- most of the time because the, the Sonic games, there's only one new one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you want to reach out to the show... Send us something that we can answer at the mailbag at the end. Of course, it's Sonic Weekly Podcast at gmail.com. Drop us a line. We may read it. And hey, if you drop us a line, you can also ask for a link to our Discord server where you can talk to like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans about many things, including, guess what, Sonic the Hedgehog. But if you want to support the show beyond just liking and subscribing and reaching out, we do have a Kofi set up. It's just sonic weekly you can uh, throw in you know throw in a tip just a, you know a random one-time donation or you can subscribe i think it's five bucks a month if you do that you get some extra goodies uh which include uh what stickers drawings from wife of the grant ashlyn yes, yes you know. uh, and whatever you request from right. me that is an art thing not like a, i'm not gonna come clean your house like within reason right now for five bucks a month maybe for a few more dollars um you know i, yeah, I, for I, a I few used more to, i used yeah. to clean for art living, include, so if... like uh, interpretive dance or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's if it's within the sphere of art I, yeah I, I would artfully clean your house i guess if it was performance art if you were wow. like i would like performance art perform you know what let's no <laughs> no, you don't. You you'll, don't you'll get drawings. You'll probably get drawings, or you can get a poem from David, or right. something from Bo or me. We don't. We, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. When we, when we get there, yeah, we'll uh, we'll figure that out. Hey, you know what? Yeah, you know, people ask for things. If there if there's enough, maybe we'll do extra. We could always do extra audio if. If we get more people, this feels like extra audio. This is right. This whole ending. If you if you didn't subscribe, it just abruptly ended. Yeah. No no goodbye. Um, oh, I guess I should uh, th- thank the. We'll, we call them our executive producers, uh, which I think it's still the same list, right? There's no it's still the same list, it, and yeah. we're just reading from the P's and the S's. From the P's and the, that's right. <laughs> Pabsy, Pig Dan, Sir Two, Saving Throws, and Sonicu. Once again, we thank you for being executive producers of this fine podcasting program. Um, and of course, once again, thank you, Aaron, for being here. Uh, Thanks thank for you. Me. Oh, yes. Thank you, Smoothies, for the edit. He's the one. He, he's back in the saddle, folks, and he's going to make sure that this ending works. Uh, <laughs> And of course, thanks, movies. Yes, thank you. But oh, right, we didn't get to talk about Bo's Rings of Saturn because you were featured next in, week. In, next week, we'll talk about how you are revolutionizing the finance industry. Uh, and, and of course, thank you, Grant, for not just learning interpretive dance, but for <laughs> granting all around town. Thank you, David. <laughs> Lovey, lovey. <laughs>